Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to show you how you can make a really cool intro section using some plugins from Arturia. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So I don't know how long this video is going to be. I want to kind of make this as detailed or at least show you my process as much as possible. So if you want to, you can grab some coffee while you're watching um, in the case that this is a longer video. But if you don't know already, Arturia makes really cool um, plugins. They make like the mini Moog. They, I think they make a Brute. Um, they make really cool hardware and synth products. Um, and a lot of them are really cool. So I have a couple to try today. I'm already a really big fan of pigments. They also sent over Analog Lab V, augmented brass and augmented string. So big thanks to them. But in this video, I wanna show you what you can do with them. So I'm probably just gonna start from a blank template here. That way um, you can see exactly how I would do things. Um, get that back in there. And then let's just start with an audio track here. Uh, my master, I do have a limiter, a Munson EQ, and the saturator. If you don't know what the Munson is, it is basically just a EQ that is taking out harsh frequencies, especially to a human's ears. So that's why I have that there. I think it makes it easier for me to mix as well as being able to get a mix louder because you're taking down frequencies, which in turn allows you to raise the whole volume of the mix up. So let's go ahead and pop in Analog Lab V here, and let's see if we can get a little bit of an ARP or something going on here. We'll demo some of these sounds just as I'm going through because I haven't opened any of these yet and then we'll go from there pretty plain sample all the stuff that they do again is really high quality and we have a ton of presets here so maybe let's go into keys here uh oh and let's just start at the top That's already really cool. Let's start with that as our atmosphere. And actually, let's go ahead and look for an ARP as well. I'm just gonna duplicate it over and then we will go back up to the top and find our plucky sound. I feel like it's a little bit easier to make plucks first. Kinda cool. That's very cool. If you've heard Antimatter by Silent Planet, there's a very, very similar synth sound at the beginning of that song. I wonder if that's what they used. I'm gonna like that one. Nice job, team. There we go, that's perfect. Let's go ahead and hop in and let's write an ARP sound, or an ARP loop, rather. Let's start from the bottom. Now let's lower our tempo a little bit. And then we'll just duplicate that. We'll raise our first note up one. I'm thinking something like that, but I could be wrong. Cool, that's actually perfect. See if we can make this a little bit sharper. Ooh, we can actually modulate it as over time too. Let's get into actual home. How do we edit the preset? Can we do that? Okay, so here is our editing here because this is actually taken from a synthesizer. Lower the brightness there and we can adjust that over time. So let's actually duplicate it and then have it go up at the end so we don't forget to do that. Cool, lower the volume. I'm actually going to, let's start with this group and then we'll take out the low end already. Cool, had some effects and stuff a little bit down the line. Now for this, we can write some chords. Let's start with a E, maybe go up one. I don't think we need to go up to F. I think we will drop down there. go up to C here and be there. Yeah, we're getting a little bit uh, too happy of a thing going on there.
Maybe we'll just do two chords instead of four or three per four bars. We can have that fade in a little bit. Since we are editing it, a actual like synthesizer or preset, at least what it looks like we're doing, I'm gonna go ahead and just automate that with a uh, auto pan, which I have set already here. So let's just go to the triangle, offset zero, and then we're gonna flip this and then have the rate bring down the face. Give it a little bit more movement so it's like it's triggering. Drag that up there. And then let's add some type of high end element. So let's continue looking in here. Let's go back in our presets. Maybe we want to find a lead. should go higher and then maybe just turn down the volume. Ah, that sounds kind of cool. We'll keep that for now. I don't know if I'm 100% sold on it, but let's go ahead and move over a little bit and try the augmented brass because I know that will definitely make an impact. And this sort of a section, would you like to quick tour? No. Again, really high quality presets in here. That could already be used as a background element. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in here. B is gonna be too high, let's go ahead and go E. Cool, had some background in there. Let's go ahead and open another brass here. Let's see what we got here. Let's do a brass acoustic maybe. Yeah, that's sick. Can we play chords? Yep, let's drop it down. And let's add some OTT right here. I think we do need another chord in there, but I don't want to overcomplicate it just in case. Yeah, these notes are wrong. Let's just have it in mirror, I think, just for some more like rigidity of the main ARP. And then we could actually just have it go up an octave for the second part, so it's adding some power to it. Yeah, that's actually crazy that we have dialed, what, five instances of this in, or three instances, three instances of the analog lab and then two of the augmented brass. Um, and you can already get something that sounds pretty cool. Granted, we've used one OTT and an EQ8, so. Um, pretty cool stuff so far. Let's go ahead and go back into our plugins. Let's go ahead and try brass again, and then we will get into strings. Um, let's see if we have like a bass. That's almost exactly what I was looking for. Let's go ahead and pop the uh, bottom notes into here. We're not gonna use both, because it's a bass. Yep. That is sick. I probably will, let's see, so let's go group here and then let's auto or EQ out, let's say under like 130. Let's use a sharp curve here. Let's see what that sounds like. 
Yep, perfect. And then let's actually go in and let's go back into Analog Labs and grab an actual base, like a sub or something along those lines. So I'll just duplicate one of these up here. Again, we'll just use those bottom notes and then let's see what kind of bass sound we have in here. Something more synthetic, that way it's a little bit more consistent. It doesn't always need to be consistent for a intro, um, often non-consistent ones will give a better uh, kind of effect where it is changed throughout the intro instead of just renaming stab, blah, 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 remaining stagnant. But um, something like a bass that is steady will be like a better car feel, I think, where it's consistent and not a bunch of um, nonsense coming through your sub. So let's see what we got here. Oops, let's go ahead and pop into here. I need to remember to click off before. We could use something like that. Yeah, that's that. I wasn't thinking that uh, in the first place, but we definitely could do that. So let's do this and then we'll just have it slowly ramp up. But instead of having it just go straight, we will do, uh, what is that? Option on keyboard if you're on Mac and then we'll just have it be like a um, kind of smooth and the sharp ramp up. That way we get a little bit more uh, kind of dramaticness out of it. I'm also gonna throw an OTT on there as well. Yeah, I like that. Even though it does change a little bit throughout the time, um, since there is a little bit more frequency coming out in the upper range, that's okay, I think, in this case. Otherwise, I would have it stagnant, uh, maybe like a respace or something like that. That is pretty um, simple. Um, that's playing throughout it. That is so sick. Whoever made this is doing an awesome job. Let's go ahead and show our automation. For the top, I'm going to bring up our brightness for this and then for our uh, sub base as well. That way they remain consistent. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a new MIDI track in the top. I automatically have it preloading Serum, but let's go ahead and pop back into our effects once again. And let's try strings. Let's see what we can pull out of here. So first what I'm thinking is I want to go ahead and copy the ARP and have this duplicated to the strings, add some more power to it. Let's go ahead and for this, let's bring this back down, I wanna say, uh, because if the strings are taking up some of the high-end frequency, we don't really need to double that too much. This is going to be too quickly. Let's see if we have a pluck string, perfect. That's pretty cool. That could be uh, like an effect. I'm actually going to uh, take a second here. Let's copy that. I'm just going to freeze this really quick and I'm going to bring that down and then we can unfreeze this. I think that could be a cool effect. I'm just gonna put effect on the actual clip here for a second, get back in here and let's keep looking through some presets. That's pretty cool too. Let's see what else we got in here. These aren't quite what I'm looking for. What if we do a lead? Let's see, maybe some keys. Better. Let's go ahead and maybe duplicate an octave, see if that gives us the feel that we're, or that I'm looking for. Let's bring down the effects. We can do that after the fact. That sounds kind of crazy. So 
something like that could be cool. Man, there's actually some cool um, effects and stuff within here too. So we have, it looks like layers. So we have distortion and chorus here and then phasers. Um, looks like we have a lot of different effects to mess with in there. And then we have the macros as well. This arpeggiator might be cool if we weren't already in an arpeggiator, but it looks like we can turn that on and then we can write. Let's see what this can do here. Oh, so whether it's a chord or not and the velocity for it. So that's pretty cool. And then the type down here too, so up and down. So that's pretty cool. It's like Ableton's arpeggiator built into the actual plugin. So if you don't have Ableton or the program that you are using doesn't have an arpeggiator for whatever reason, um, that'd be cool to use. Um, one thing, if you notice, I'm trying to mess with um, how quickly this is actually coming in. So it feels like it's, uh, there's obviously a little bit of attack because it is a stringed instrument. Obviously there has to be some type of rise into it. It doesn't just happen. Um, but one thing you could do is if you wanted to, and let's say you didn't have that parameter to where you have an attack and a decay, you could take this, you could um, go and have it play doubled. So if we went ahead and stretched this out here, I'll consolidate the clip. I can go ahead and double it. So it's double the time. <coughs> you could go ahead and freeze it and then pull it back down so that the, um, even though it's taking a little bit longer for it to play out, then you can shorten it. So it's like uh, smaller hits. Um, something like that works in this situation. But what I'm going to do, I think... <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening there. I think I messed with too many settings here. That's cool. But I'm going to do the same thing, LFO tool or auto pan that I named LFO. Phase down, offset, triangle, and then. Just give a little bit more of a hit. Cool. Now let's go ahead and dive into this effect really quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverb this out. I guess we can leave it out here. Reverb. Something like that. I'm going to freeze it once more and then flatten, bring this in, have this be like our um, impact and then duplicate this. We could probably time stretch it a little bit. I'm not gonna do that though. We'll reverse this. Then we will take off a little bit of the beginning and then shift it over. I hate when there's a little clipping like that. Let's go ahead and just drag this back a little bit. Side chain will most likely fix that, but let's just do a little bit of a fade here. Cool. And then make its own little group. And we don't need a lot of that low information. So I will just drag this a little bit forward. Cool. So let's see what we have so far. Cool. Let's do one more instance, and I think we can use one more high end layer towards the end here. So I'm going to copy our chords over, and then I think I will just duplicate them. Let's go here. And then if I need some like dissonance notes in there, we will do that. But let's go ahead and drag a new, mm, let's see, do we want to do brass? I think we want to go back into analog lab. So I think that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and copy that over here. And let's see if we can find a cool, let's see, organ is what I'm feeling. Something that has some good um, movement to it, I suppose. Let's add some OTT to that, and then we will add another top note to it. I think because we did that, what I'm going to do is actually double that top note as well with another instance of the Analog Lab. Um, is this our bottom cell? Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
The decay on that is crazy. Let's go ahead and do lead. Uh, hop into here. What are we feeling? Oops. I need to, again, I need to stop typing. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Let's automate this movement throughout each note. Let's bring it down, have it go down there, back up a little bit, down, back up, down, and then back up all the way. First and foremost, these are the wrong notes. Go EF. Those are also. Those are also the wrong notes. Let's take these out. Let's take these out. Let's just triple these. Uh... Huh? I know this isn't out of key, is it? Oh yeah, it's way out of key. <laughs> it's way out of key. I meant to say I know it is out of key. All right, let's just fix this after the fact. Freeze. So I was just playing an E and I was registering as an A. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go complex here. And if I was playing an A and I went, or let's see, um, A, A sharp B, C, C sharp D, D sharp E. You can hear some like drums coming in and stuff like that. Um, I think though that kind of demonstrates what you can do with the plugins already. Of course, we have a, a lot of effects and stuff we can do here. So I know we need some reverb up on here. Same thing with this. That almost sounds like the Synthwave Vegan, or uh, not Synthwave Vegan, but Vicera sound in the Veil Maya intro. Uh, dun, dun, dun. You know what I'm talking about if you know the song. Um, but cool. I think actually that's going to wrap it up. So we have a pretty cool intro. Of course, this is all made using the Analog Labs um, augmented brass, augmented synths, or strings rather. Um, and we got a really cool effect in what, like 30 ish minutes? I've been recording for 26. So a really cool intro section with not really a whole lot of digging around and stuff like that because all the presets and the stuff that Arturia offers and their products are obviously really high quality and you can get something that sounds really cool and not a lot of time. So if you're not as um, maybe as well versed as just writing little art melodies or maybe you don't spend a lot of time doing so. I sure don't. With the limited knowledge that I have of theory and writing music, I was able to get something that I think sounds pretty cool and not too long. So I think that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Again, thank you to Arturia for sending these products over. I definitely will be making more with what they've sent me and they'll probably for sure show up in a lot of my new music that's coming out. But thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, let me know with a like and a comment down below. But again, thank you for watching and we will see you again in the next one. And if you want me to continue working on this track, just let me know.